Hey guys, it's Gail with Everything Nash here with Mitchell Tenpenny. Good to see you. You too, you too. It's I good. I think it's, it's a... been like BMI Awards 2019 <laughs> yeah. since I've seen you. Oh my gosh, yes, it has. Because, yeah, I keep forgetting last year never happened. So, yes, yeah. it's been a while. Last good year to see you again. Okay, I want to talk about, first, the Ryman show. I love the Ryman. I was just there for Darius's thing. It's yeah. such, like, it's like the opera. You walk in and it's just magic. It's, it truly is. Um, this is a crazy full circle moment. I've seen probably a billion shows there. So to get to play it and to be from Nashville, I don't, I'm just, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to feel. It's going to be crazy. And talk to me about the special reason for the show. It's in honor of your father who passed away in 2014, right? Yeah. So we, we started the 10 penny fund, which is, you know, it's, to me, cancer is such a huge part of my life. I lost my dad. I had my aunt still going through it. I've lost another aunt. So we, we wanted to make sure that this, since this is such a special day for us, that we give back. And so, yeah, all the proceeds are going to our fund, uh, the 10 Penny Fund. And um, it's just going to be a special night. My family, a lot of family, a lot of friends going to be there. And again, we get to, you know, donate everything to my charity. And the first time I get to headline the, the rhyming. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird talking about it. It's pretty crazy. And I'm very excited. Can we just sit with that for a minute? Headlining the yeah. I know. I don't. It's it's weird because, like I said, I've seen a million shows there. And I, I even, you know, people are like, oh, did you dream about being up there? No, I didn't because it wasn't. I never really thought it was possible. Um, so this is when I got that call. Uh, hey, um, you could headline the Ryman on this tour. Would you be interested? I was like, why are you even asking me? Would I be interested? I mean, is that possible? Are we going to be able to sell tickets? Like what? And it's. Um, it's, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy over here. <laughs> Interesting. Patty Smith, the rocker is getting ready to play her first show there and she's been around for uh, years. So you got one up on Patty Smith. I'm just I, I love Patty Smith. I didn't know that. That's so awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. I want to talk a little bit about your dad's influence. I lost my mom too, to a brain tumor in 2004. So I know oh, what it's man. like. To, I'm sorry. I'm man. sorry for your loss. It's when you lose a parent to something besides man. old age, there's just a different dynamic. So talk about how you're honoring your dad through your music, through this Ten Penny Fund, just his influence. Oh man! Well, first off, I'm I'm very sorry for that. You, but you're you are right. It's a different loss. Um, and and to me, my dad, everything I did from sports to music, he always let me do and let me live out my dream. And he was always there, even when I was playing in hardcore screaming bands. It might not have been his music, but my dad was there and he was smiling and. You know, he never got to really see, you know, this part of my career do its thing, you know, signing the record deal and doing this. But he's driven me to the Ryman and dropped me off there before. So this is um, this is just a crazy thing. I believe, you know, it's the mother church. I believe that there's a, that there's a lot of guardian angels watching out for me, including my dad there. So it's just going to feel it's going to feel really special. You know, like I said, my whole family's we're all from here in Nashville. And so I think we're going to, you know, we're going to feel his presence that night. And it just means the world to me to be able to say, Dad, look, all those times that you let me play the guitar and the drums super loud in your house and, you know, and annoy the crap out of you, I'm sure, um, we get to play the Robin. So. And you also honor him with your video. You have the hat that says, hang on, B-A-O-Y-S. <laughs> I did that without looking. I just want you yeah, to know that, I did that, that without was, looking. <laughs> that was really good. Yeah, I even confused myself a lot, too. <laughs> But talk about why you wanted to, what that means to you and yeah. why you included that. Uh, he, uh, every time we would leave the house, and he, either meeting one of my, me or my brother, he would say, be aware of your surroundings. Mitchell, be aware of your surroundings. That's it. I mean, he knew I was going to get to do stuff and, and stuff in life happens. He just said, be aware of your surroundings. So I always thought that that was a great saying. And, I'm, you know, we, we made a whole side brand off of that. And uh, I think it's important. I think it's important in this day and time at all times to be aware of our surroundings. You know, sometimes we're always in our cell phones or our minds are elsewhere. And I think it's a good lesson to, to be taught and to learn and a good way to honor my dad is uh, I live my life by what I heard him tell me every single day I walked out of the house. So uh, it's just another one of those full circle things. And uh, I want to continue to honor my dad and my last name he gave me. And uh, it's just another way I get to do that. Uh, EP is coming out, Midtown Diaries. I was yeah. surprised. <laughs> Um, it feels like Drunk on You was 2018, right? Uh, yeah. I think 2018. 
or drop uh, drop me yes yes drop me, drop me sorry yes yes sorry yeah yeah uh, yeah drop me um, yeah 2018 yes sorry yes does it feel like it's time. been three years no <laughs> it doesn't that's the crazy thing and again since we lost a year or two it's like it's it did no it doesn't i feel like i just was up in the room signing a record deal and then heading out on radio tour for that song so it's amazing how fast this flies by and that's why we have to fully take advantage of every moment that we get okay so talk about the ep the seven songs on it with some great writers i'm such a fan of hardy i want to go on record and say i'm such a fan yeah. of hardy, who i know wrote a couple of songs talk about just the whole ep the project yeah, I mean, there, it's just a combination of, uh, you know, about three years of songs. And, you know, it's hard to pick eight songs on an, on an EP when you've written 500 and a lot of great songs with awesome people like Hardy and, and some of the best songwriters in Nashville. And so I really had to go back and just look at these songs and, and find out, am I still in that same place now like I was when I wrote it? And I also wanted to have a lot of diverse songs so people could find their song on the record. Like, you know, because I have my songs when artists release records. I'm like, oh, that song's written for me. And so I didn't want to, I wanted to make sure we had, you know, love songs, breakup songs, heartbreak songs, fun songs, um, weird songs that just, you know, out of nowhere. And so I wanted everyone to be able to find their story. And so it was, it took a while to kind of to hone it into eight. Uh, to do that. And uh, I don't know, I think we, I think we, you know, gave a wide variety and I love every single one of these and they're my story. They're my story of growing up in Nashville, hopefully becoming a little bit more mature and becoming an adult and just uh, kind of some real life situations and scenarios. And I think a lot of people can latch on to. Do you feel more when you're getting ready to release an album or an EP, a project, do you feel more excited, more nervous? What's your <laughs> level of emotions or yes? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a vulnerable thing to put some of the things you say on a record out to the world because some people know it's about them, but I'm not going to call it, like you're not going to say their name. So, and also how are people going to take it? You know, I'm the weird guy that immediately gets online and looks at the DMs and the comments, not, not in like, I don't, oh, I, like for the bad ones. I love to see like which songs people are relating to, which ones are hitting home. And uh, that's always special for me. It's really cool when people reach out and, and say that stuff. Be like, oh, I think this song's written about me. I'm going through this right now. It's amazing. And uh, I just, I love it. I live for that. So there's that excitement, but a little bit of anxiousness of hoping people dig it. <laughs> Wait, Carly Pierce just said she actually reads all of her DMs. Do you actually read all of them? I try to, yeah. I go through, I go through every single, I can't respond to every single one. But I, and I, I respond to a lot of them, but I, I do. I try to read every single one because that's important to me. We don't, we don't exist without people listening to our music. And, and honestly, that's what makes you want to write more songs is when people reach out. So I encourage people to reach out. I do try to read them more than anything. And, and, it, and it gives me a little, you know, a little shot for the day, a little shot of energy because it's, it's, it's special when you connect to someone with a song. I'm going to DM you now just to see if you read it. Go, do it. <laughs> I, I will. <laughs> Okay, I can't let you go without talking about Chris Young at the end of a bar. How fun yeah. was that? Uh, I'm such a massive Chris Young fan of his voice. And, uh, you know, we became t friends, seeing each other in Midtown all the time. Um, and we, it was a snow day, snow apocalypse in Nashville. And we had the ride on the books. I called him. I'm like, man, I don't want to cancel. Can we please ride? And he goes, buddy, I got four wheel drive. Let's go. And I'm like, all right. So we went and wrote this song. And <clears throat> we were sitting there talking to our other co-writer, Chris Stefano, and Chris Young goes, man, you should have seen me and Mitchell the other day at the end of the bar, just, just tearing it up, just venting, just doing everything. And I was like, dude, hold on. That sounds like a song right there. And I was like, think about everything that starts at the end of a bar. I was like, our friendship, Chris, I said, you know, breakups, heartbreaks, you know, you never, you never know, like you make your, you can meet your best friend. And so we wrote that song pretty quick. And then I was hoping he would sing it because I just jealously wanted to listen to a song of mine with his voice on it. But he wanted me to sing the demo. He's like, buddy, you go sing the demo, man. You, those are, he's like, you were singing the whole thing as we were riding it, so go do it. And so I did. And then the next day he called, he goes, hey, buddy, you care if I, uh, I put a vocal on that? I was like, yes, yes, please, please go put a vocal on it. And I was so excited. And then the next day he called, hey, buddy, do you care if, like, we leave some of your vocal in there and whatever? I'm like, I mean, no, just go for it. And then the next day it's on the record. 
and that never had and the record was done so it took four days it was crazy it was just the demo like what we hear was the demo basically yeah basically what you're hearing is the the, the vocal last song there's the vocal last song that day the day i wrote it and then chris went in the next day and, and sung it and all that production stuff we pretty much did all that day uh that's chris <laughs> Steph, that's chris and uh doing a you know putting his magical touch on it but yeah most of that song's what we wrote that day that's crazy how much fun was the video <laughs> i mean it didn't it look was, like any fun at all it looked like you guys were having a terrible time it was absolutely nuts chris calls is like hey man we're gonna do downtown um we got a stage set up i'm like i'm just thinking okay cool you know a stage set up whatever and i get down there and it's at the end of broadway again my city broadway grown up i've seen like another pinching moment and i'm like there's about we're two hours till we start shooting. Uh, we got the buses backstage, and there's about 200 people out there. And I'm like, oh, this is perfect. That's plenty of people to make a camera. Like, the camera can make it look like it's a lot more people than it is, and it'd be great. Because uh, I didn't expect it to show up for a music video in 100-degree weather on asphalt. And then we get, we, we get up. And they're like, all right, we're ready. We get out the bus. We walk out there, and Broadway is freaking full all the way down to – you know, the arena. And I'm like, I look over at Chris. I'm like, what is happening, man? <laughs> and he just starts smiling and laughing. And then, and then we had to play the song 12 times <laughs> to everyone out there. So they got a little taste of what a music video is like, but they were screaming. Nashville showed up. They made us feel so special. And uh, I think you can see it in our faces in the video. Like um, when we're on Broadway doing those scenes and looking at each other, we're like, this is, this is just crazy. This is something you, you can't even dream of. It's nuts. It's awesome. And you're doing some dates with him this fall, right? You're doing your own tour and him because you like to be busy all the time. <laughs> yes, we're, we're do the Chris Young tour first, which we're super excited about. So we get to perform that song every night together. Not and 12 times, though. <laughs> no, not 12 times, no. Maybe 12 times totally over the whole thing. <laughs> but uh, uh, And then, yeah, then we, and then, we, then we hop on our tour to do our headlining tour and, um, you know, when it all got taken away, when we couldn't tour, that's why we're doing this. I want to tour as much as possible. I'm going to play. I want to soak it in. Uh, and I want to play the new stuff. It's, it's, it's so fun to me, especially, you know, they're already singing back our single Truth About You, which is nuts to me. It's, it's such an emotional moment to see that. And, uh, you know, I crave it. I love it. And I love being around people. So we're going to be out on the road as much as possible. So come hang out. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to come. I'm going to come and I'm going to find you and I'm going to hug you because I remember your big bear hugs that everybody loves. So I'm going to come and I'm going to get myself a big Mitchell 10 penny bear hug. Please, please. I would love that. That sounds great. Good to see you, my friend. You too. I'm, I'm so sorry about no being worries. here. I, we got it all done. I can put, good. Well, I, I just read it wrong. I, I apologize. Your time is very valuable. So thank you. Dude, it's all good. I'm sending you a big hug. Best of luck to you. And we'll talk again soon.